Andy Raymond, unfiltered, out of Australia. That's ARU. He joins us. Andy, we were just having a play wrestle. We were just having a play fight. I know that the police got involved and there were public officials and we abused a few people. And we got Look, it was just a play fight, OK? That's all it was, Whiten and Mitchell. Ah, the off-season. We just love it. And it's one of the attractions to rugby league. It's the game that never sleeps. It's the game that keeps on giving. And these young fellas keep ending up on the wrong side of the newspaper headlines. Just another week in rugby league, my friend. Just another week. We can can change which pub it was. We don't change which time it was. We can change which (laughs) players... It all just happens again. We've read the same story. Yep, yep. They're going to tell you what Mum and Dad always used to say, and I'm sure your parents did, nothing good happens at 3 a.m. Whereas as kids, as teenagers, as rock and rollers, as people are going out there punked up wanting to hit the town, everything good happens at 3 a.m., right? Well, there comes a time in your life where you, you know, you've got to put the handbrake on just a little bit. It's called wisdom and maturity, um, my maturity has been questioned for a long, long time, most prominently by the missus last night. But nothing good does happen after a certain age, after a certain time. And look, I know these two guys and the clubs are claiming it was a play wrestle. It was nothing. We've been targeted because we're NRL players. But boys, the fact of the matter is your highly paid professional athletes with endorsements from from companies with little kids with stars in their eyes on a bucket of money with that comes responsibility with that comes conditions getting paid a million dollars a year isn't just to play rugby league it's for all these other things and the sooner rugby league players realize that the better it's not just about playing rugby league. Marty, there's a whole lot more that goes into it. Yeah, but I mean, look, you know, we're running out of breath on this though, aren't we? Because, I mean, we keep saying it, we keep saying it, we keep saying it. This is not the only time this is going to happen this year. As you say, all we're going to do is change the names, change the date, change the nightclub, the 3am thing's going to exist and there's going to be a couple of goons behaving like goons. I've just, I've, I've just said before you came on, I said, I've actually started to... I've actually started to embrace it now. It's just part and parcel of the game. To me, it's as much a part of rugby league as the six tackle rule. Okay, it just it just is. They can't do anything to stop it. All they can do is make excuses for these guys. Yeah, look, my my issue is is you know to, I'm going to be honest. My issue isn't the fact they did it. My issue is going to be with a the authorities and b with the nrl to ensure any punishment is consistent so the authorities their punishment to latrell and jack is consistent with what it would be to the local butcher the baker and the candlestick maker my issue with the nrl is that their punishment to jack and latrell is in line with what others have done irrespective of their names we're talking about two of the biggest names in the game we, you, you can't you can't define or determine a punishment based on the star power of the player. Good call. It's got to be across. It's got to be across the board. So it doesn't matter if you're the top guy in the game or the bottom paid in the game. If you stuff up, you are going to cop the same sanction. And that's where the issue has been in the past, mate. A real inconsistency from the governing body in determining. Who gets the slap on the wrist and who gets the big kick in the bum? Well, I was just going to say on a personal kind of thing, I mean, I had a play fight with a guy at work a couple of years ago and got completely cancelled. I mean, you could call it a play fight, I suppose. No punches actually connected. Anyway, on we go. Um, the, big bash fi- the Big Bash final, uh, 50-something thousand at Perth. Apparently that was the record crowd for the final. I know they've had bigger crowds at the MCG back in its glory days. Is that a sign that this this competition can be resurrected? Because the greedy guys came along, they doubled the rounds, the players only played, it's like super rugby, they play once every three or four games is the most they're ever allowed to play. Can it recapture its glory days or is that final a one-off because it was the Perth-based team that was hosting? Perth have been starved of, of any type of genuine sport for a while throughout the COVID period. So, yeah, there's an element that the Scorchers drew a crowd because, uh, you know, they hadn't seen as much sport I think, I genuinely think they can reboot and revitalise this competition. They've finally figured out that flooding the market 
has been a really poor choice. Let's pull back on number of games. Let's pull back on number of options. So if you're going to go to a game, you better get there this Saturday night, not wait for the next one. Um, and, and the scheduling. The scheduling's the big one, Marty, and we've spoken about this previously. They've got to get the calendar right for next summer, not just for Australians, but for the internationals, because you need the big dogs playing. You need the Martin Guptels, you need the Steve Smiths, the David Warners, whoever it may be, you need them playing from the opening game to the final game. That's what the crowd wants to see. So I'm saying, yes, we can do this. Yes, it can be back. A uh, little bit of thought needs to go into it, mate. That's an absolutely brilliant quote. And I'm just saying to Lachlan, just off air here, can you please get that? Because I want to replay that later on in the program. Given the fact that we're talking about Super Rugby Opiki today, we're talking about Super Rugby Old Tauroa. The best women players in New Zealand aren't playing the, the, the domestic professional competition. They're actually off playing sevens or they're doing TV jobs. And as far as Super Rugby Old Tauroa goes, this is great. <laughs> You're going to laugh at this. So there's a rule now yeah. in New Zealand that the players aren't allowed to play more than five games in a row. Now, that's even if they play one minute of each of those five games. Then they have to, it's mandatory. They've got to be rested. They've got to be rotated. And you put this, okay, put this in perspective for the NRL guys last year. 26 competition games plus playoffs, origin in the middle of that. Then you go to a World Cup. Did any of those World Cup kangaroos turn around to Mel and say, I'm tired, I can't play, I've just played five games in a row? I can't, rec- I can't recall. Imagine being the coach a generation ago and having to go up to Ruben Wiki and saying, hey, big boy, we need to rest yeah. this week. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Sorry, it mate. Just wouldn't. That, that's a... Yeah, you know, that's a Ian Roberts. Thing. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Robbo. No, no, no. You got to settle. No, you got to rest this week because you played five games in a row. I mean, they must think rugby's yep. a part-time job. These guys. Redi- ridiculous, and mate, there's there's too many times where the sport and sports in general, I think, overthink themselves, mm-hmm. and they get them get themselves into a position like this. Uh, please. Any marketing genius with a ponytail and bifocals, <laughs> you've, you've got to realise it's an entertainment industry. It. It's more than sport. It's about entertainment. It's about a show. Yep. And the show is the biggest names at the best venues as much as you can. There it is. It's not that bloody difficult. Def- hey, are you Andy Raymond unfiltered? Steve Smith says winning in India, mate, is bigger than the Ashes. I, I'm, does, he doesn't believe that. I know it's a... Look, it's the holy grail for Australia Australian teams. The rest of us love it. Uh, I know John Wright, JG Wright, well. And every time I talked to him, he said that Larksman calls him about every second week. And he always says, thank you, Larksman. Remember that series? The drawn test? Yeah, and then I, that, I, See? Yeah, still I, hurts, I doesn't it? Do. Look, a, a few of the Australian cricketers have, have come out over the last six weeks and stated the importance of this tour. I mean, that's stating the obvious. It's a massive tour. And it always has been. Uh, and, it, and it is for any cricketing nation because the Indians are so fanatical. It's been such a holy grail to win over there for any sporting side, any cr- test match cricketing side, and you get up for it. We love it. But to say that it's bigger than the Ashes, I think that's probably just promoting and doing the right thing by the television broadcasters, the sponsors, and um, and Cricket Australia. I don't think anyone would genuinely think that, that winning in India would compare to, to winning the Ashes. But, mate, that's me from outside my bubble. I, I do know today um, the pitch in Nagpur, very, very interesting in terms of uh, what the curators have done. They're watering, and, and there's pictures of this on social media, they're watering the centre of the surface only on the pitch and they're leaving the two areas outside the left-hander's leg stump unrolled and dry as a bone. Now, we've got, uh, we've, we've got a bunch of left-handers in our cricket side. Uh, Dave Warner, uh, you know, just one. Travis Head is there as well. Usman Khawaja. Um, they're planning the ultimate spin attack and they're getting assistance from... Yeah, the preparation and um, and the groundsmen, as they should. As they that's should. called home ground Thank advantage. That's, that's, what what, that's what it's called. That's what it is. And no two pitches in the world should ever be the same, and it should be of benefit to the home nation.
I also think that home ground advantage in India means that, no, 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 we'll, we'll provide chefs for you. It's okay. No, 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 we'll do all the cooking in-house. No, 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 on, honestly. Yeah. It's, honestly, no, 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 no. You like it a little spicy? Um, let's go back to the Indigenous game because we started off by talking rugby league and it's interesting, isn't it? That, oh. you know, I had a note here. It just completely slipped my mind because obviously Luttrell and Jake Whiten can't talk about the fight. They can only talk about this Indigenous game. How big a deal is it? It's not, and the trials are not. Um, and I'm sorry if I've upset anyone, um, but it, it, it's not. And and sadly, so many of the big game names have ruled themselves out, or the club has ruled them out. Now this happens every year. They they promote the biggest names in the game on the posters and on the website to sell tickets and to sell sponsorship. And one by one, the big names start dropping off. 23 names have dropped off the original list of superstar players. There are guys there that not many people have seen before. And good luck to them on a, on a good stage. Good luck to them. And I hope they're having a wonderful week embracing their culture, embracing everything that this game is about because it's a game about positivity it's a game about inclusion diversity all those things and it's a wonderful concept but the game itself isn't taking it seriously and that's evident by the volume of guys that have either pulled out been pulled out or have come up with a story now the trials the nrl wanted to reinvent the trials and, and put a bit of importance into it. So they put a hundred thousand dollars up on the line in a point scoring system for two weeks of trials starting this week. Well, majority of sides have named majority. Uh, let me start that again. Majority of sides have named the majority of their big names not to play, not to play this weekend. The the big names are being rested from week one. They will have a trot around for a certain amount of time next week. Probably all bar Penrith, who will play in um, in the World Challenge Cup Championships uh, or the World Club Championship against uh, the UK Super League winner. So, you know, that'll be a cracking game and there'll be some interest in that with Pampers and St Helens. But the $100,000 hasn't piqued the interest of the coaches or the clubs they're very much experimental footy sides uh, that have been named for this weekend and opportunities for young men to uh, to ply their trade in front of uh, the coaching staff to see, you know, where they're at, basically. So, you know, the real stuff doesn't start for a couple of weeks, mate, to, to be really honest. I'm going to enjoy the footy being back. I will watch every game. I will love it. Uh, I'll take a look at the next generation of players but in no way, shape or form am I going to read anything into the trial matches, win, lose or draw. Hey, uh, you Andy Raymond Unfolded. Who we got this week on the show, pal? Mate, real, really good uh, week, really interesting week. Had Kyle Felt, the record breaker, the history maker from the Cowboys. Uh, got Jaden Braley tonight. And Jesse Ramian has... Uh, doesn't do a lot of media and he has done an absolutely terrific interview. It's a little about him, a little about family and some of his mates and that comes out this weekend. You can find it anywhere. You get your podcast by searching Andy Raymond Unfiltered. Mm, love you like a brother, mate. Thank you so much. And we'll be back in touch again next Wednesday.